the fructosification of America and, of course, the world. Ready? Another quiz. Can you name the seven foodstuffs at McDonald's that don't have high fructose corn syrup or sucrose? <laughs> no, mustard has it. Oh, come on, come on. The big one. French fries. But they have salt, starch, and fat, so they're not so good either. Okay, what else? We'll get to coffee. Hash browns for the same reason, right? Salt, starch, and fat. Okay, what else? Chicken McNuggets. I was shocked. I was shocked. No sucrose or high fructose corn syrup in chicken McNuggets. But as the um, uh, circuit court judge in New York called them, they are still a McFrankenstein creation. <laughs> okay. But uh, nonetheless, no, no, uh, no sucrose. I was, I was really shocked. Sausage. Oh, they're terrible. They're just disastrous. But I mean, there's nothing good in them at all. But there's no, there's no fructose. Um, sausage. Diet Coke. I, coffee, if you don't add the sugar. And iced tea, if you don't add the sugar. By the way, the Chicken McNuggets have, you know, we have a disclaimer. Because no one eats the Chicken McNuggets without the dipping sauce. And there's a whole bunch of high fructose corn syrup in the dipping sauce. So this really blew my socks off. This was my daughter when she was in second grade two years ago, Miriam Lustig. Okay? brought these two cartons of milk home for me and said, Dad, you're not going to believe this. Okay? Second grade. Okay? So here's the calories in Berkeley Farms, 1% low-fat milk, 130 calories, 15 of them are sugars because it's lactose, right? which is okay. And here's Berkeley Farms, 1% chocolate milk, 190 calories, 29 grams of sugar, all high fructose corn syrup. Okay? It's like a glass of milk plus a half a glass of orange juice. Okay? And that's what we're giving to our kids. And you know what the, you know what the, uh, the nutrition department at the SFUSD says? Well, we have to get our kids to drink milk somehow. Now, is that is that is that brilliant or what? I don't know. Now, what about WIC? Okay. So we talked about the 112 pounds of orange juice that the kid down in Salinas was drinking. What about WIC? So remember what we started with? We have an epidemic of obese six-month-olds. Remember? So could this be the reason? So here's a can of formula. 43.2% corn syrup solids, 10.3% sugar. It's a baby milkshake. Soda, Coca-Cola is 10.5% sucrose. Formula is 10.3% sucrose. Any difference? And there's a huge literature that's now coming of age that shows that the earlier you expose kids to sweet, the more they're going to crave it later. Plus, there's a new literature that shows the more sugar the pregnant woman drinks or eats during the pregnancy, the more that gets across the placenta. And, and actually causes what we call developmental programming, changing the kid's uh, adiposity even before the kid is born and driving this whole epidemic even further. So we'll close in a few minutes, okay? But I just want to point out what's the difference, okay? Here we got a can of Coke. Here we got a can of beer. And I'm not picking on Schlitz or anything. I mean, it's you know, any beer you want, okay? So 150 calories each, no difference in terms of total calories. Percent carbohydrate, so 10.5% from sucrose here, except it's high fructose corn syrup, but who cares? Okay, 3.6% alcohol. Here's the breakdown, 75 fructose, 75 glucose for the Coke. Okay, 90 alcohol, 60 maltose for the beer. Remember, the first pass GI metabolism takes 10% of the alcohol off the table. So when you actually compute the number of calories hit in the liver, which, remember, was the big difference between glucose and fructose. Remember, 72 versus 24, and started the whole thing into motion as terms of what happens that's bad, okay? Bottom line, no difference. So, we have a, some, th something called beer belly. Well, welcome to soda belly, because that's what America is suffering from. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's what it is, okay? Now, you wouldn't think twice about not giving your kid a Budweiser. But you don't think twice about giving your kid a can of Coke. But they're the same. In the same dosing, for the same reason, 
through the same mechanism. Fructose is ethanol without the buzz. So, fructose is a carbohydrate. Yes, it is. But fructose is metabolized like a fat. And I've just shown you that 30% of any ingested fructose load ends up as fat. Okay, so when people talk about high-fat diets doing bad things, no, what they're really talking about is high-fructose diets. And that's what Ansel Keys was looking at. So the corollary to that is, in America at least, and around the world too, a low-fat diet isn't really a low-fat diet because the fructose or sucrose doubles as fat. It's really a high-fat diet. That's why our diets don't work. And fructose, just like ethanol, for the same reason, through the same mechanism and in the same dosing, is also a toxin. The FDA will only regulate acute toxins, not a chronic toxin. Fructose is a chronic toxin, right? Acute fructose exposure did nothing, remember? Because the brain doesn't metabolize fructose. The liver does. And the liver doesn't get sick after one fructose meal. It gets sick after a 1,000 fructose meals. But that's how many we eat. So the FDA isn't touching this. The USDA isn't touching this. Because if the USDA touched this, what would that mean? That would mean an admission to the world that our food is a problem. So what do you think that would do? There are, still, there are three things in this country that we can still sell overseas. Weapons, entertainment, and food. Cars? <laughs> Computers? No, I don't think so. What do, I mean, you, can anybody think of anything else that another country wants of ours? What? Tobacco, tobacco right, tobacco. All right, you get the picture, all right? So the USDA doesn't want to know about this. Okay, because this is bad news. Okay? And so who runs the food pyramid? The USDA. It's the fox in charge of the hen house. Okay, because their job is to sell food. And who's eating it? We are. So, in summary, fructose, and I don't care what the vehicle is, it's irrelevant. Sucrose or high fructose corn syrup, I don't care. Fructose consumption's increased in the past 30 years, coinciding with the obesity epidemic. A calorie is not a calorie, okay? And the dietitians in this country are actually perpetrating this on us. Because the more you think a calorie is a calorie, the more you think, well, then if you ate less and exercised more, it would work. It doesn't. All of the studies show it doesn't work. Here's why it doesn't work. Because a calorie is not a calorie. Fructose is not glucose. We know a calorie is not a calorie because there are good fats and bad fats. There's good protein and bad protein. Okay, there's good carbohydrate and bad carbohydrate. And glucose is good carbohydrate. Glucose is the energy of life. Fructose, okay, is poison. You are not what you eat. You are what you do with what you eat. And what you do with fructose is particularly egregious and dangerous. Hepatic fructose metabolism leads to all the manifestations of the metabolic syndrome. Hypertension through that uric acid pathway, de novo lipogenesis, dyslipidemia, hepatic steatosis through that DNL pathway, those three enzymes, the new fat-making pathway, inflammation through junk one, hepatic insulin resistance because of the serine phosphorylation of IRS1, obesity because of the VLDL transport to the adipocyte, and leptin resistance promoting continuous consumption, basically starving your brain, making you think you need more. Fructose ingestion interferes with obesity intervention, as we showed in our clinic. The more soft drinks, the less well diet and exercise actually worked. Fructose is a chronic hepatotoxin for the same reason that alcohol is. The only difference is alcohol is metabolized by the brain, so you get alcohol effects. Fructose is not metabolized by the brain, so you don't get those effects. But everything else it does is the same. But the FDA can't and won't regulate it. It's up to us. So with that, I'll close. Thank you.